Hi. Um, greetings. Tonight I want to um, read to you from uh, the book of Hebrews. And uh, this book is just phenomenal. It has so much um, just basic information on the the amazing work of what Christ accomplished uh, as uh, our high priest and uh, as uh, the last prophet and it traces it to the Old Testament uh, the sacrificial system and you really get an understanding of why um, and how God reconciled um, to from the from reconciled himself I mean reconciled the world to himself and he did this with the blood of Christ, the shed blood of Christ. And that was so precious uh, in God's sight um, because it was actually God himself who uh, is part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit from Matthew 28. Um, we see that God is represented and, and exists in three separate created uh, beings. There's one God in three beings. And our, our minds cannot understand this, but um, that does not mean it does not exist. Uh, when you see God's creation and how sophisticated it is, we don't understand many things about the creation. Our, our cells are just way too sophisticated. <coughs> For us to understand, each cell has 200 million um, machines in, inside it, um, and we are all under decay right now because of the fall of Adam. So we are in great peril and, and danger because we're all dying. Uh, we live for a while and then we, we start to die. And we're subject to death at any moment. So our need for a savior is is great. And it, it's kind of like um, imagine yourself being in a fire, uh, and and everybody's gonna die. And and so the question is, what do I do? Do I do nothing and just let everybody die, or do I show people the fire escape? And that's the, the question I ask myself a lot of times, and I'm amazed how many times, and nine, you know, 99.9% .9 of the times I say nothing to people, and uh, it's even higher than that, and, and I'm just ashamed of that, because uh, people need to hear the Word of God, and once they hear the Word of God, then, you know, then, then they can, um, you know, the ball's basically in their court. And the Word of God can do its work in their hearts according to God's purpose. So um, that's my goal in these videos here is to um, spread the Word of God. Um, there's six billion people on earth right now and that represents approximately 50 percent of the people who ever live. You know a high percent, a good percentage of them speaking English. I know in um, China alone, there's 300 million people who speak English, and that's more than the population of the United States. So, um, I pray people will hear this um, video and see that God uh, is real. We know we can trust the Bible as the Word of God. Why? Because Alexander the Great, he translated the Old Testament into Greek 300 years before Christ, and, and that um, in the call, in something called the Septuagint, and so we know it existed 300 years before Christ. Yet there are over 50 prophecies that uh, refer to Jesus Christ. So we have an objective historic evaluation, uh, or something to hang our hat on intellectually, and, and no atheist or agnostic with this information should be able to ignore the fact that the Bible tells of Jesus coming from out of Egypt and Hosea 11.1 um, you know from Galilee um, in Isaiah uh, 9 I believe and, and um, 
being from Bethlehem in Micah 5 uh, verse 2 um, so how, and, and being uh, a Nazarene so how, how can God how can um, one person fulfill those four prophecies those are just four prophecies how can he be from one one person be from four different places well we find out that you know Jesus left he went to Egypt and he, was, he was ended up called uh, out of Egypt when Herod wanted to kill all the children well, we find out that he was from Galilee and, and Mary traveled on horseback 85 miles you talk about uh, childbirth today and, but that's what Jesus went to he was on a horseback for 40, 85 miles from from Galilee to, to Bethlehem um, and, and to, to be counted in the census um, that the Romans wanted to take as Joseph was from um, from Bethlehem so it, it, it's uh, fascinating once you see what you have in your hand that so many of us just take for granted but the word of God is, is will last forever you know and about, we read uh, recently about that um, I'm going to just read uh, some of, some of um, Hebrews and you know the, here's a good place to start let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before the before him endured the cross scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart that's an amazing scripture and it shows you that God is the author you know with, with this word going forth it goes into our ears and into our hearts and it impacts our will causing us to believe um, so I'd just like to read the first uh, verse in uh, Hebrews chapter 1 it says in, by the way that other reference was Hebrews 12 in the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe so God made the universe through Jesus the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So He became as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is superior to theirs. So. And then he says, For to which of all the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. And those are Old Testament quotes. So, Um, this is just to, um, to get you going into um, Hebrews and get you an idea of who God really is right at the right at the top um, and and I just wanted to say if you jump uh, this there's so much to talk about here but but just if let's talk about the Word of God in chapter 4 it says the Word of God is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. So, I also wanted to read where Jesus talks about um, how there is a rest for the people of God 
and and that's what we we need to understand is when we have faith in God we take a rest in Christ from pleasing God as far as uh, trying to attain salvation and if you read chapter 4 that is, this explains it exactly um, so if you read therefore since the promise of entering his rest still stands let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it for we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did but the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard it did not combine it with faith now we who have believed have believed entered that rest just as God said so I declare on my oath and my anger they shall never enter my rest and yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world for somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words and on the seventh day God rested from all his work and again in the passage above he says they shall never enter my rest so today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts for if Joshua had given them rest God would not have spoken about a later about another day there remains then a Sabbath day rest a Sabbath rest for the people of God for anyone who enters God's rest rests from his own work just as God did from his let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience so that's it that's if you have faith you you can rest you you don't have to worry faith in believing in God and the amazing thing he did um, acquits us and it's nice to be acquitted in God's court you have God's promise behind it and God's word and God's promises are not like man's promises. Man's promises, he may mean that he he, he means to keep his promises, but he he, he often doesn't. Mean God doesn't doesn't, and he gives you his. God does keep his promises, and he and he seals us, guaranteeing what is to come. And we see the guarantee in uh, Romans four sixteen and Ephesians one fourteen and Hebrews seven twenty two as well as uh, 1 Corinthians 1.22 and first, actually 2 Corinthians 1.22 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5 so I want to try to read one more thing but now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice himself for Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one he entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way uh, the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own then Christ would have had to have suffered many times since the creation of, er of the world but now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people and he would appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him so that's in Romans 9 and the blood is what accomplishes this the blood of Christ and how much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit of offered himself unblemished to God clean, cleans our sacrifices from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God for this reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant with those who are called may receive the promised eternal, eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant he did not enter by means of the blood of goats or calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal, eternal redemption. When Christ Jesus came, he's the high priest of good things that are already here. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. Praise God.
Thank you for listening.